Okay, hey guys, if you feel like you are eating healthy, maybe you're also exercising, but you're not losing weight and you're confused about why, today we're going to be going over that because you submitted what you eat in a day and I'm going to be going through your what I eat in a day and doing essentially like a diet review and providing you guys specific tips and strategies to help you achieve your goals. So today actually marks week three of the fall intermittent fasting challenge, which is like nuts. I can't believe it's already week three. Um, if you guys still want to join in, it's definitely not too late. It's never too late to start on your wellness journey. So you can check out the details linked down description below. Um, but other than that, today we are going to be celebrating week three of the fall intermittent fasting challenge by doing these diet reviews and going through what you guys sent and providing specific tips and strategies. Um, of course, as usual, this is not to replace medical advice. This is for educational purposes only, especially if you guys are taking any medications. Really important that you just double check with your doctor because there are a lot of medications that are affected by food and meal timing. So just now that we have that in the clear, I'm going to bring up the first one we have here, which is Yuna. Okay, so Yuna is... Five foot three. Um, she said her weight fluctuates between 96 to 98 pounds. Uh, she her she actually has not a weight loss goal. She wants to gain muscle mass. So I actually did want to start off with this one first because um, there have been a lot of questions lately on body recomposition. So how you actually increase muscle mass uh, while maintaining or not increasing body fat percentage. Uh, so what she eats in a day, she has her first meal at 3.45 or 4 p.m., and it's nine ounces worth of grilled chicken or four ounces of grilled salmon, um, four ounces shrimp and non-starchy veggies, a hard-boiled egg, cheese, almonds, fresh squeezed, fre fresh squeezed lemon juice, uh, fruit of some sort, raspberries, black coffee, or, which is also around 3.45, and her dinner is two egg bites with greens and mushrooms, um, Greek yogurt, cottage cheese, cashews, and cranberries. Uh, and then the evening hot green tea or chai tea. She does strength training at the gym three times per week and body weight training at home daily, cardio between 48 mile uh, walks, four to eight, not 48. She intermittent fasts 24, so 20 hours a day um, and has an eating window of four hours and does 16 hours of fasting on the weekends. Once a month, she has a 24 hour fast. Her sleep is about six to eight hours and mostly just has black coffee, unsweetened hot green, um, or chai tea and on the very rare occasion, sparkling water. So her goal, you can see here, I'm having trouble gaining muscle mass despite eating on average 1.2 times my weight in protein. Some days I'm at 1.5 times. I prefer shorter eating window because I tend to feel sluggish after eating, even if I avoid carbs. I always feel more energized in a fasted state. Okay. So I've uh, pre gone through some of these and I made some notes on what it is that I'm seeing that could be holding, um, you know, back. So looks like, Yuna, you're actually doing a pretty good job with your protein. I calculated for you about 70 grams of protein per day, which sounds like it fluctuates quite a bit, but it sounds like that's what you're getting. And if you have a body recomposition goal, which is where you're increasing muscle mass, that's one of the most important things you need to be doing, obviously, in addition to the exercise, but you can't exercise without protein and you can't you know, have the protein without the exercise if you are looking to increase muscle mass. So you're doing a great job with that. You're hitting your protein needs. Um, I the biggest things I would say, uh, first of all, let's take a look back at your fasting period. I know you said that the longer fast do make you feel better, um, but I believe if we yeah, if we take a look at the timing, so you're having your first meal. I'm not sure if you guys can see that yet at 3:45 or 4 p.m. That's pretty late for a first meal. Um, you know, that might be why you're feeling a little sluggish is, is because you're breaking your fast so late. And I believe you also mentioned, yep, you have a tendency to wake up multiple times throughout the night. So I've been talking about this a little bit more lately on the timing of the fast and how that actually can have a really big impact on muscle recovery and sleep quality, because the other portion of body recomposition is actually getting the time to have that recovery. And the time that we actually recover our muscles is usually when we're sleeping during that deep, high quality sleep. So if you're not getting that consistent, deep, high quality sleep, and if you are exercising and if you are getting um, your enough protein, then that's probably one of the biggest missing components for you, especially because six to eight hours, it's a huge range. Uh, if you're having six to eight hours, that's not a very consistent sleep schedule. You're probably not consistently getting in enough high quality, deep sleep for recovery. 
Um, so the timing of your fast could be affecting that. If you're eating too late, that actually has been found to increase cortisol levels in the evening, just because when we eat it tends to raise cortisol levels a little bit. Um, so you might want to try and shift your eating window a little bit earlier. That way you're able to have a, a little bit earlier of a um, fasting start period and not get that big cortisol spike before bed. But also the other more likely issue is the multiple hits of caffeine throughout the day. So let's go back and take a look at your timing of the caffeine. So you're having, I think it was at the same time you're eating, you're having your 16 ounces of black coffee. So it's at 3.45 or 4 p.m. That's just your first thing of coffee. And that's already two hours later than I would normally recommend at minimum. Usually I try and recommend about 12 p.m. being the latest having coffee, but you're having coffee really late, which means caffeine you know, it, it, in order for it to fully get out of the system so that it doesn't affect the sleep quality, it needs, um, you know, about eight to 12 hours to fully get out of the system, depending on the person and how quickly they metabolize caffeine. So if you're having it already at 345 or four, and then on top of that, at 730, you're also doing the unsweetened hot green or chai tea. Chai tea actually is fairly high. It depends on what we're talking about. If we're talking about chai tea, you with the black coffee uh, or black tea that it is going to have caffeine. Um, there might be some decaf chai teas, but more than likely it does have caffeine. Same thing with the hot green tea. It's not as much as the coffee, but there is still that caffeine component and you're having that right before you're going to bed. So that's where you're seeing a lot of issues with the sleep quality, possibly the timing of the fast, but also more likely the fact that you're getting two hits of caffeine really late in the day, which can really negatively affect sleep quality. And I know a lot of people will say, because I see this all the time in the comments, whenever I bring this up, well, I can fall asleep. I can take an espresso shot and have a nap and it doesn't affect me. I'm able to fall asleep. It's not just about falling asleep. It's about staying asleep and also getting high quality deep sleep. So that is where on the occasion it is nice to do something like the Fitbit or like the Aura Ring if you have that um, and see how much time you spend in different zones of sleep, like light sleep, REM, and deep. You can see a big difference on the nights that you have caffeine and maybe fall asleep quickly, but you spend the whole night in light sleep, which is not very restorative. So from a body recomposition perspective, if you're already hitting the protein, you're already getting the workouts, that sleep component is so huge and so important because you need that time to have that muscle recovery as well. Um, I think that was the, the only other thing I would say for Yuna before we move on is to, just to make sure, I mean, you're having, I'm always so hesitant about those 24 hour fasts. I know that people like to do them for health purposes and, and they can be useful. Uh, but if you're already having issues gaining muscle mass, then that might be too much fasting for you. You might want to stick to more of the 16 hour daily fast. If you can get all your protein in during a 20 hour fast, great. But once a month, you're also not having any protein, which you're already not gaining muscle. So that could be hindering your progress. Okay, so I'm going to move on to the next one here. Um, so Yuna's, just to recap, she was focused more on body recomp, increasing muscle mass. So we went through her tips on what she can be taking a look at to help improve her muscle mass. Um, if you guys are just tuning in, we're doing diet reviews. You guys submitted these last week, and I'm going to be reviewing about five different diets. So um, each one with a completely different type of goal. And if you want to also have some questions answered, make sure to throw them in the chat, put four question marks before and after your question. And at the end of this live stream, I'll also be getting to questions. All right, now let's go on to the next one. So we have... I think 37 was the next one I was going to take a look at. Oops. All right. So now we have Sheldon. So Sheldon is six foot, um, 255 pounds. Really? Okay. Sheldon is amazing. So Sheldon has gone from 410 pounds to 255 pounds since Christmas of 2021. Sheldon, if you're watching right now, congratulations. That's amazing. You've done a really great job already. Uh, just wanted to make sure that you know you are absolutely crushing it. So seriously, congratulations. Um, he still has a goal of getting to 210. So already made so much progress about, what is that, 155 pounds, I think? Um, roughly, yeah, 155 pounds in the last 10 months. So doing a really great job in just that kind of finishing line for Sheldon. Uh, Sheldon breaks 
the fast at 7 or 8 a.m. with either one of my protein smoothies using Greek yogurt and whey isolate to get 100 grams of protein or leftovers from dinner. Uh, dinner is meat to get about 100 grams of protein with sautéed vegetables like broccoli, asparagus, or cabbage with butter. So it sounds like Sheldon's doing about a two-meal structure, really focused on the protein, fat, and fiber. Um, in fact, I actually had estimated about, what was that, um, 152 grams of protein per day. So if you're hitting 200, that's that's really impressive. Um, that's pretty difficult to do. You likely don't need to be eating that much, but if it's going well for you, then you can just maintain that. Um, Sheldon also walks five to six miles a day and an hour to an hour and a half of full body strength training two to three times per week, but hasn't been able to the last month or so because Sheldon's working 15 to 16 hours a day. Um, sleep could be better, has one mug of coffee that's done by 11. Uh, thank you for everything you do. It has literally helped save my life. Seriously, Sheldon, you are an inspiration. I'm so proud of you. Congratulations on what you've already achieved. So just based on um, what I'm looking at from this brief history, it looks like the meals are actually really great. Obviously, they've been working out really well for Sheldon. Um, Sheldon's really focused on the protein, the fat, and the fiber. Clearly, it's, it's already helped him get to down 155 pounds. I wouldn't really change much about that. Maybe the one thing you could do is add in some type of vinegar, like lemon juice or apple cider vinegar, just get even further blood glucose stabilizing effects. But other than that, your meals are really, really great. Super proud of you. The one thing or two things I really wrote down that I'm seeing with Sheldon's, let me make this bigger so you guys can see it. Um, the first one is his exercise. This is probably the more obvious one because Sheldon used to be doing the two to three times per week of um, full body strength training for an hour to hour and a half and walking five, six miles per day. That, I mean, that's admirable. That's, that's a lot of exercise. You don't need to be doing that much. And I think that's likely why when work started to get really busy, I mean, 15 to 16 hour days, that's, that's a lot. Um, but that's probably why when work started to get really busy, exercise went out the window because hour and a half a day is a lot of strength training. You don't need to do that much to get the benefits. You can do 20 minutes three times per week if it's a, a well um, put together program and get a lot of the same benefits, if not more. So um, what I would recommend, just taking a look at this, we really need to make sure we're getting the muscle mass increasing at this stage because that really helps to improve uh, its insulin resistance, really helps to improve how the body uses fat as fuel. Um, so in any way possible, if we can just get in 20 minutes two to three times per week of some type of strength training, more focused on you know, heavier type of um, maybe higher intensity, heavier type of strength training. That way you just get the most bang for your buck in a shorter amount of time since you don't have as much time to dedicate to it. But you want to focus on the type of strength training or workouts that are really focused on increasing muscle mass. That can totally be done in 20 minutes, three times per week. You don't need an hour and a half. And I think that would really help to provide that um, sense of flexibility with your workouts where you don't have to be looking at it as like an hour and a half commitment multiple times per week. 20 minutes is all you need. And that can really help to boost the muscle mass and help with your finishing line goals. Because Sheldon, you've already done a really great job. Super proud of you. Just this last little tweak. And I think you're going to get there faster than you realize. Uh, the other thing is you said sleep could be better. This is just me being nitpicky because I think the bigger thing here is the exercise and getting back to getting your um, strength training back in, even just for 20 minutes. But if you mentioned that your sleep could be better, then we also want to try at least to improve that a bit because we already know sleep quality is so important for increasing or decreasing the cortisol levels the next day, helping to tap into especially the weight loss around the belly. So I'm not sure if that's something that you're focused on, but Generally speaking, a lot of us could improve sleep to help with the weight loss goal. So uh, if you are able to um, add in, like if it works with your, uh, if you have any medications, if it works with your lifestyle, adding in a magnesium supplement in the evening or not having any tech 30 to 60 minutes before bed, you know, that doesn't add any time to your day. It doesn't add any time commitment since you're already very busy, but it can really improve your sleep quality. And even if you don't have as much time to sleep, you can at least get higher quality sleep. Okay, so I'm going to move on to the next one because I have quite a few I wanted to go over today. Um, usually I only do like about three, but I wanted to get in more people so we could have more of these diet reviews today, um, which if you guys are just tuning in, this is week three of the fall intermittent fasting challenge. 
Um, and so to celebrate week three, because this is our last week of the challenge, I'm doing diet reviews that you guys submitted. And this is something I've really enjoyed doing. I think it's great to be able to provide this more specific feedback and for you guys to see real life examples, because that's something that often can just kind of like, like break through uh, when you see it even in someone else's meals and in the slight tweaks that maybe something you um, resonate with that you can then apply to your own life. Okay, so next up we have Ashley. So Ashley is 5'5", five five. she's 240 pounds and she has a weight loss goal of 100 pounds. So her breakfast is, I had to look this up. Um, I had not heard of this drink before, but it's a, basically an energy drink. And um, and for lunch, she has a low carb wrap with deli turkey, cheese, lettuce, and avocado. Then she has a snack or multiple snacks of fruit, sugar-free beef sticks, skinny popcorn, oh snap pickles, um, boiled eggs, and then dinner is air fryer, chicken thighs with side of rice and a veggie or side salad. She's starting to do walks for about 20 to 30 minutes per day, which is fantastic. Um, just started intermittent fasting and she goes to sleep around 11, wakes up 6.30, falls asleep with a TV on timer that she sets to turn off after an hour. This, this is, I'm just going to interrupt myself here. I wasn't planning on bringing this up because I think there's some more pressing items that we need to discuss um, with Ashley's here, but for, I, I can understand why you want to fall asleep to the TV with the timer. That used to be me. That's the only way I used to be able to fall asleep in like high school. I played back to the future on repeat over and over and over because, you know, my anxiety levels were higher. And so having some noise in the background, I thought helped me to fall asleep. That actually is ultimately going to make your sleep quality worse. So it does take a bit of a, um, you know, a break in the habit and finding other ways to unwind your mind before bed, like reading or even listening to some of those sleep casts. Uh, Headspace has some really great ones. That way you're not active. You're not, you're not getting your brain activity higher and making it more um, difficult to get that higher quality deep sleep. That's kind of a side, but just I know that it can be really difficult to break that habit because that was me for years, uh, but it does make a big difference, especially from a weight loss perspective and just from feeling better, like your energy levels are going to be way better once you quit that habit. Um, so she said she's used Weight Watchers for calorie countering, cal calorie countering, calorie, cal calorie counting. Uh, she loses about 20 to 40 pounds and then gains it back. I binge and have a sweet, a big sweet tooth, but also love um, junk food like chips, pretzels, et cetera. All right. So there's a few different things, but I think the biggest thing, the thing that will help the most for Ray, or for Ashley um, is we need to address the sweet tooth and the, the cravings for foods that are really highly processed and really work against your goals because you can do amazing during the week. But you know, if you are still having these foods on the weekend, which a lot of people do, a lot of people will like restrict themselves during the week and make it so that they are really hungry during the week. And then on the weekend makes it really easy to binge on some of these foods that work against your goals. Sophie's chasing a cat right now. Sorry for the background distraction. distraction. Um, so we need to really address this first. Actually, this is why for the um, my complete intermittent fasting bundle, why I have the seven day detox before even starting intermittent fasting. Because if you try an intermittent fast without addressing the sugar, without addressing the cravings, it is going to make it impossible to actually stick with intermittent fasting or impossible to actually see progress with your goals. Um, so if you are experiencing that sweet tooth, the very first thing we need to do is actually address the types of foods you're eating um, and making sure that they're satiating because there's two main reasons, um, well, I guess three main reasons why we really have a sweet tooth. The first one is unstable blood sugar levels. Like if you're already eating these foods that are highly processed, it's going to cause more cravings for them because you get this big spike in blood sugar and then this really big crash that leaves you uh, your body searching for something to immediately bring it back up. The best thing, or the, not the best thing, but the thing that does it most immediately in that situation are those highly processed, high sugary, high refined carbohydrate foods. So we want to break that roller coaster cycle. Um, the second reason is maybe stress or poor sleep, which goes back to what I was talking about with improving your sleep quality. The third is you're just hungry. Craving, it's amazing how much cravings can be stopped by just eating adequate amount of protein for your body's needs. And given that you are, first of all, starting off with this Alani new energy drink, I did have to take a look at that, but it does look like it 
probably taste pretty sweet because I saw multiple different types of either um, natural or artificial sweeteners in there. So it is probably sweet. I found that those really hyper sweet flavors, even if it's low calorie, can really trigger a lot of those sweet cravings later in the day. Um, so, you know, switching to, switching to coffee or, or unsweetened tea or keto coffee would be a much better option. Uh, looking at your lunch. So this actually isn't a bad lunch, but the thing about the deli turkey is that deli meat generally is pretty low in protein compared to like if you were to just actually have turkey breast. So I forget the specifics, but I think it's four to five grams of protein per ounce. So it's a lot less than what you'd get for like the seven to nine grams of protein per ounce of the regular um, unprocessed form. And for um, your sugar tooth, for your sweet tooth, we need to get that protein actually at your body's needs to really help prevent those cravings. So I guess I didn't, I thought I calculated yours out. I guess I could do that real quick. Um, what was, okay, so since, since Ashley's uh, BMI is above 30, I'm going to be using her goal weight, which is 140 for her protein calculation. And since she does have a sweet tooth, I'm going to be using the higher end of protein. So it looks like from my very quick calculation, we're looking at about 101 grams of protein per day. Since you are eating like two and a half meals, which, you know, you have your lunch, your dinner, and then like kind of that mini meal, I highly doubt you're getting anywhere close to 101 grams of protein from complete sources between all those meals, um, especially if one of those is deli turkey. So you could do, you know, you could do... Um, Canned, canned tuna, if that's faster for you, you could do rotisserie chicken that's already cooked, which is also a faster option that is more dense in high quality protein. But you definitely want to make sure you're hitting that protein amount for your body's needs because that's the first major step to stopping that sugar tooth or, or sugar cravings. And that's the biggest thing holding you back right now. There are other things from there, like the, you know, the rice and the skinny popcorn. Um, given that you've had difficulties losing weight in the past, there might be some degree of insulin resistance. But the, the first thing that really needs to be addressed is the, um, the low satiety level of your meals. And the lower protein intake is likely what is making that flourish. Um, so once you've addressed the protein, I would really recommend checking out my seven day detox. You can check that out on my website. If you go to the shop page, I, I might have it linked down below as well, but that would be a really, really great place for you to go next after you have addressed your protein to help address the sugar cravings, getting, getting those foods out just for seven days and resetting your taste buds. So you really can get yourself started on the right foot. But the first thing I would just highly recommend, you got to get that protein up to actually make you satiated. Um, and of course, asleep. Like I mentioned, there's other smaller things that can add up, but we need to the most pressing thing right now, take a look at that protein for you. Okay, so next up we have Rachel. Yeah, Rachel, I'm going to take a sip of water first. So Rachel is 5'10", she weighs 161, and she likes to be at 150. So this goal is a little different from the others. Still body recomposition goal. Um, it, this is mostly body recomposition, actually. But we're in like that last 10 pound range, which I've done a video on in the past. But we're going to go into some details specifically for Rachel here. Uh, so she has two cups of coffee, each with one tablespoon of heavy cream. Breakfast is usually a bowl of Greek yogurt, a full serving. So I'm not sure what she meant by full serving, but probably because there's two different serving sizes that they list on the Greek yogurt like containers, either those individual packs, which is a three quarter cup serving. That's about 15 grams of protein. Or if you get those large things of Greek yogurt, they list the serving size as one cup, which is about 20 grams of protein. So we'll say between 15 to 20 grams plus another full serving of protein powder. So just having about 35, 40 grams of protein at that meal with blueberries and some peanut butter. Lunch is not regular, really depends on how hungry I am. But if I do have something, it's usually tuna with chopped cabbage and mayo and sour cream. Um, mayo yeast has no sugar. Dinner is usually beef, pork, fish, or chicken with some kind of veggie medley, usually season, seasonal veggies, uh, occasionally a couple of squares of dark chocolate, seven grams of sugar, of serve, seven grams of sugar per serving, <laughs> or I mix whipped cream with a little vanilla and have it with berries. Sounds like my dessert that I'll have. Uh, Rachel works out three times per week, full body resistance training, 10 K steps per day, um, have trigger session, uh, one to two times per week looks like. And, um, she is kind of using 
intermittent fasting with those two tablespoons of heavy cream might be getting above that one gram threshold that I usually recommend, but essentially nearing that intermittent fast, her first food consumption is at 1030 and stops eating by seven. So what is that? About a 15 and a half hour rough fast. Uh, her sleep is the hours are good, but quality is not great. So that's kind of what we we're talking about earlier, where you can have the full eight hours, but you can have poor quality sleep, um, especially if you're in that light sleep. So she, for Rachel, she wakes up between two to 3 a.m. ever since she was pregnant, which was 12 years ago. So it's a long time to not be having that great high quality sleep. Uh, recently, she tried. I thought this was very interesting. I think everyone needs to see this because I think we've all been there and we've all done that. Um, Rachel recently tried to reduce her fat intake in order to break through that last 10 pounds, but did not find much success. I feel it just made me hungrier and I'm not seeing any weight loss. So that is huge. This is something I um, discussed recently. I think it was like two weeks ago in my calories video on how if you just simply reduce energy, the body is compensation. Um, it, it compensates for these systems by increasing your hunger or decreasing your metabolic rate. Ultimately, all of those working against your goals are just making it so much harder to achieve your goals. So I'm actually glad that Rachel experienced that because she saw that it didn't help with her goals. And now she can go back to eating those foods that she really likes that are actually have the full fat content. Um, especially with this type of goal, we're looking at like fine tuning a few things. Like Rachel's already done a lot of really great things. She's exercising. She's um, exercising quite a bit. Actually, she's having high quality meals, very low sugar. Um, but because we're in that like last 10 pound range, we need to do something a little bit different than perhaps someone who's looking at the hundred pound weight loss goal. Because here, you know, we're, we're looking for the smaller changes and that actually requires um, those small tweaks done consistently to make a big impact. The first thing I'd recommend, since you are working out quite a bit, I the thing that concerns me, let me get back to it, is the lunch. So she said that her lunch is not regular and really depends on how hungry I am. That is something I've seen quite a bit with the A and peeps. You know, you start your satiety increases so much that you often like will skip out on one of the meals, which you can totally do a two meal structure. That's totally fine. You can do that instead of a three meal structure if that works better for you and your satiety level. But if you aren't consistently getting in the full protein amount, especially with this type of goal where like with Rachel, she's looking to increase muscle mass and decrease body fat a bit, um, that missing protein periodically will make it so that she's just breaking down her muscles rather than actually increasing muscle mass. So she's not getting the benefits from those workouts because that protein isn't consistent. Um, so the first thing I'd recommend is take re retaking a look at your protein intake. So I estimated that given your goal of body re recomposition, increasing muscle mass about 117 grams per day or 60 grams per meal, if you're having a two meal structure or 40 grams for a three meal structure. So, um, you're hitting that roughly 35 to 40 with the first meal, but then your second meal, your lunch is not consistent. Um, if you do have the tuna with the chopped cabbage, great. Like that tuna is probably covering the extra 35 to 40 grams right there. But if you're not consistently getting that in, that's a full extra, you know, 30 to 40 grams that you're missing out on that's needed to repair muscles. So I would recommend deciding, okay, if the two meal structures doesn't work or if the three meal structures doesn't work for me, I need to reassess my meals for a two meal structure and actually increase the protein enough at each of those two meals so that you are getting adequate protein to support those um, body recomposition goals. This is actually something, um, I have this in my 21 day intermittent fasting program, telling you how you can actually break this up from a two meal to three meal structure and you, what you need to increase or decrease, but you really need to make sure that the protein is accounted for. That's the one thing we need to be getting that consistent amount of each day, especially if you are exercising and especially if you do have that body recomposition goal. So I'm not sure what page it's on um, in the 21 day intermittent fasting program, which is what we're using right now for the fall challenge. Uh, but I do have in there where you can help determine how to switch from a three meal structure to a two meal structure to better fit your goals. So you're actually going to achieve your goals and get adequate protein. Um, so I have the complete intermittent fasting bundle, which includes the uh, 21 day challenge or the 21 day program link down description below. Highly recommend you check out that two to three meal page on how to actually go about that. 
because it's not sounding like the um, three meal structure is working for you. And we really need to make sure you're getting adequate nutrients in between those two meals to support those body recomposition goals. Okay, so next we have Ruth. So Ruth is, okay, good. You guys can still see this. <laughs> I don't have my usual monitor because I'm traveling right now. So I have to look just all on one screen. Um, Ruth is 5'3", weighs 195 pounds, and she's looking to have about a 45 pound weight loss. She uses OMAD, which is one meal a day, um, three days of the week, and has dinner around 5 to 5.30. I'll eat protein and veggies and fat. On other days, I usually fast until noon and eat Panda Express's super greens and green bean chicken for lunch. And then for dinner, Greek yogurt, chia seeds, flax seeds, protein powder, macadamia nuts. Not very hungry after eating lunch. I have a hard time getting in three meals per day. Just another example of how important it is to be honest with yourself and looking at your meals on if a three meal or two meal structure works best for you. Given that Ruth's um, eating window is so small, makes sense why she has a hard time getting three meals in per day. So in this case, might be better to just actively plan on those two meals per day um, that are more protein rich. Uh, for exercise, she walks my Winston every day. I'm assuming maybe it's a dog, <laughs> um, probably 20 to 30 minutes. And um, she was doing hit twice a week and incorporating some weights, but fell off the wagon. She uses OMAD during the week and two meals um, a day during the weekend. Sometimes I'll eat twice a day during the week. Uh, she takes magnesium before bed, so she sleeps pretty well. Really important. Um, she found out the hard way to consume electrolytes during the day and magnesium at night because I had really bad lead, leg aches. Yeah, it's very easy to get that electrolyte imbalance, which can affect your energy levels, which can affect your sleep, um, which can affect the uh, muscle cramps as well when you are using fasting, especially when you aren't eating as high sugar or fine carbohydrates, which is why in my various intermittent fasting programs, we always make sure to actively add in electrolytes. So, so, so important. It is an, an absolute game changer. Actually, another, this is like kind of a side, another um, really big sign that you aren't getting enough electrolytes, if, especially if you're using intermittent fasting and you're eating like the way that I talked about in my complete intermittent fasting bundle is if you're getting constipated. Doesn't seem like that should be affected, but that's a really big sign that you likely are experiencing an electrolyte imbalance. She has green tea during the week, um, water with electrolytes. Great job, Ruth. Very proud of you. I'm constantly drinking some, some things throughout the day. She's lost 20 pounds and a lot of inches. However, I stalled and I know it's because my weekends include alcohol. I always gain a couple of pounds and then lose it by the middle of the week. Okay. So um, there's a few things I wanted to bring up with Ruth. So Ruth's goal is about a 40 pound. I think she said 40 pound. 45 pound weight loss goal. She's clearly doing a lot of really great things. She's focusing on protein, um, fat and fiber with the protein and veggies and fat. And she's using intermittent fasting. I would just one thing to take a look at there. I'm not going to re reiterate it too much because we just went into this is making sure you're getting adequate protein for your body's needs. Um, I have the calculation in my programs as well as the video on YouTube. Just search how to calculate your protein needs on YouTube. It'll pop right up, but making sure you're getting adequate protein. because that's a huge, huge benefit from a body recomposition perspective and from just preventing hunger and cravings. Um, but anyway, you're the first thing that I would say, we'll get to the alcohol because I do want to address that because that can be a big factor as well, but is the exercise. So Ruth said she was doing hit twice a week and incorporating some weights, but fell off the wagon. I want you to ask yourself why you fell off the wagon. Was it because it was beyond what your fitness levels at that time? And so really wasn't enjoyable. Did you not like the workouts? Is it a time issue? I want you to figure out what it was that was the barrier for why you were um, not able to continue with the exercise. Like if it was something you didn't like, but you thought you had to be doing high intensity interval training in order to see benefits, you know, switch to something you enjoy. Getting that consistency in, whether it be Pilates or CrossFit or the videos that I have um, for the workouts included in my intermittent fasting programs, whatever it is that you enjoy, I just want you to be consistent with it because at this point, we really need to improve that carb sensitivity and that and increase the muscle mass as a, a really great tool to do that. Um, there's just so much research showing that when you actually combine intermittent fasting with strength training of some sort can really help to accelerate progress. Uh, it was Kristen that I interviewed on my YouTube channel, I think it was like a year ago now. Um, but she was able to first 
achieve a lot of progress with intermittent fasting, but hit a bit of a plateau. And then she added in my workouts that are included in my intermittent fasting programs and was able to completely break through her plateau and lose about an extra 15 pounds while also seeing those body recompos recomposition benefits. So it's, you've already nailed down your fasting, nailed down your food, as long as you're getting um, enough of the protein, at least during the week from what I'm seeing, because we'll get to the alcohol in a second, don't worry. Uh, but it looks like we just need to get back to consistency with that training, whether that be, you know, um, what is the thing that it's like hot yoga, like core power yoga or something. I'm not really into yoga, but if it does have some type of uh, challenge on the body or on the muscles, the Peloton workouts, the, like I mentioned, my workouts, um, the, the ones you can find on YouTube, whatever it is, just try and get consistent 20 to 30 minutes three times per week and just have it be something you enjoy. So you're more likely to be consistent with it and make sure it also meets you where you're at in your fitness journey as well. Don't jump straight into like CrossFit. If you're not at that CrossFit level, you, if you want to get there, great, but you want to build up to that so that it's, you know, you're, you're increasing your muscle mass and strength along the way. That that's a cat. I'm staying at my parents right now. We're traveling. Sorry for the cat noises. And she's not liking my dog right now. Um, anyway, so I would just take a look at your workouts, make sure you can get consistent with that, figuring out what the barrier really was like, was it time? Was it, um, because you didn't like it? Was it because it was beyond your fitness level, figure that out and then reverse engineer it and figure out a way to get that, um, strength training or exercise or whatever it is, two to three times per week, preferably 20 to 30 minutes, um, each time. It's a huge tool when paired with intermittent fasting to really break through a plateau. But I also want to talk about where is it? Um, uh, here it is. Because she also mentioned the alcohol on the weekends. So it, without knowing too much, you know, alcohol, of course, um, can be a barrier because it can increase that insulin resistance from a liver perspective, just depends on how much you're drinking, as well as if it also includes sugar, because fructose and alcohol both can increase that fatty liver, which can then increase insulin resistance and make it a lot harder to achieve that weight loss goal. Doesn't mean you have to quit alcohol, but we need to realistically take a look at how much you're having and what you're having and try and make the best choices possible for the weekends. If that's something you still want to include right now. Um, so the first thing we need to take a look at is how much, of course, if you're having like eight to 12 drinks on the weekend, like that's a lot of alcohol for the weekend. Try and bring that down to two to four on the weekend. Um, if it's really high sugary drinks, then let's try to switch to zero sugar options, especially when you combine the sugar with the alcohol, it really has a double down effect on um, hindering that weight loss progress. So if you're having like cocktails or even like beer or something that's just going to have that higher carbohydrate content, try switching to something that's preferably zero. So if you're to have like a, um, a soda, like a, a soda or vodka soda with lime, let's not going to have any carbohydrates or sugar. You can still have some alcohol and still, you know, include that on your weekends, but it's not having that double down effect of sugar as well. Or taking a look at your wines, making sure that you switch to dry farm wine that's been lab tested for zero grams of sugar versus really sugary wines that are often made in the U.S., so just taking a look at the sugar content and the amount, trying to bring down the amount and trying to switch to a zero sugar option. That way it just better serves your goals while still being able to include some alcohol on the weekends. Okay, that was a lot. <laughs> we went through a lot. I wanna answer a couple of questions. We'll see how many I'm able to get to. Um, I saw a couple come through. Let me just grab some water real quick. Um, yeah. So Andy just now asked, could thirst also be a sign of electrolyte imbalance? I drink about a gallon a day. Yes. Ironically, feeling more thirsty could actually be a sign of electrolyte imbalance because, um, you know, that thirst mechanism is also triggered by electrolyte, like that search for electrolytes as well. And if you drink water that doesn't contain electrolytes, you're just further diluting your um, electrolyte content. So that could very well be part of it. But on the other side, it could be a sign of high blood sugar levels. Uh, so I would, if you're, you know, you could try adding in some electrolytes, to see if that helps. Um, but if it doesn't, then you might want to actually get your blood sugar tested because that could be a sign of um, prediabetes as well. Elizabeth, um, if carbs sensitive are all carbs equal or are some carbs worse than others? 
It's a great question and absolutely they're not equal. What we want to look at is the glycemic load. So there's the glycemic index, which you guys might have heard of before. You can essentially disregard that because it's not actually a realistic number. Glycemic load is a much more realistic number of, of how impactful those carbs are on your blood sugar levels. Because ultimately, if you're carb sensitive, you likely have some degree of insulin resistance, which means insulin is just higher. It's even during the fasted state, it is still a little bit higher. Um, so if you eat things that really spike blood sugar and therefore really spike insulin, um, so those carbohydrates that really do so, then you're just keeping that insulin high and not allowing it to come back down. So there are definitely carbohydrates that are better than others. <laughs> Sophie. <laughs> Um, so what you want to take a look at are those low glycemic index carbohydrates. So even if we're looking at the more starchy ones, like potato versus butternut squash, I, I believe, cause I actually was just, uh, doing this for a video, a baked russet potato, I think has, don't quote me on this, but I think it has like 28 or 38, uh, a glycemic load of 20 or 38, anything above 20 is considered high versus butternut squash for the same amount has about a glycemic load of three. So it's very, very low glycemic load, even though it does have starch. So there's definitely ones that are better than others. I would recommend um, if you have my complete intermittent fasting bundle, I have a whole um, like protocol for advanced weight loss strategies, which is really great if you are carb sensitive and the meals and the recipes that are adjusted to that to make sure that it's opting for the better, lower glycemic uh, load vegetables and, um, and carbohydrates. So I recommend you check that out. It's all in the... In each of the programs, you can see like the key and the recipes that are going to um, be matched up to that advanced weight loss strategy protocol. But you can also just make sure you read through that protocol. And um, that's in the level up guide. But all of that's included in the complete intermittent fasting bundle so that your meals are better tailored to where your body's at right now in your journey. Let me grab some more water. <laughs> okay, so it's kind of what I was mentioning in the beginning um, about making sure take all this with a grain of salt, pun intended, because if you are uh, if you have some type of medication, you definitely want to check in with your doctor on timing of your intermittent fast and of your meals. This is why this video is for educational purposes and not to replace medical advice. But uh, Mary X says, I want to do intermittent fasting and cut out breakfast, but I have to take medication in the morning that I need to eat with fats. Do you have any advice? First of all, check with your doctor. Um, second of all, if your doctor gives you the okay where you can still have some type of fast, but you need to have fats, um, if, if you can just have pure fats with the medication, if that's okay with your doctor, you can have something like keto coffee um, or adding cream to your coffee, which is a pure source of fat that doesn't break that, um, that type of fast. You're still able to keep insulin lower because you're not eating any carbs or protein. So it's actually, again, another thing that I recommend for beginners in the complete intermittent fasting bundle is using something like keto coffee because it does contain fat that helps keep you more satiated, um, but also doesn't break that fast, doesn't cause insulin to spike. So you can check with your doctor to see if something like keto coffee would work for a fat content to be taken with that medication. Definitely make sure though that you double check because when it comes to medications, you, you wanna make sure you're doing it right. But yeah, you can do essentially like that fasting mimicking, which I do um, talk about in the complete intermittent fasting bundle. Great, great option for beginners as well. Um, can I use salt, table salt for electrolytes? Yes, you can. Although I would recommend using like, if you're going to use a, a table salt, using like Redmond's Real Salt or Celtic Sea Salt, both of those are just a little bit higher quality. That's what I personally use if I'm just using salt for electrolytes. Uh, okay, let's see what this one is. What if you're teaching hot yoga four to five times I think a week along with other kind of yoga, where does this fall into the category of exercising as demo all my classes? I've started walking throughout the day and I'm hitting 10 key steps, added two days of basic strength training, like squats, pull-ups and push-ups. The best thing to do because um, with exercise in order to actually see the benefits, we want to constantly be challenging our body. If you're teaching yoga four to five times per week and you're demonstrating I'm sure for you, it's not difficult anymore. It's probably gotten where you're really, you're really strong and you're able to hold those poses pretty easily. So it's likely not a physical challenge for you anymore. 
So with exercise, we always want to be increasing that physical challenge. Otherwise, you stop getting the benefits. So it sounds like you're doing that now by adding in the two days per week of basic strength training. But a good way to measure this is to um, check out, like if you have the, uh, the option to, if you have the availability of this, an in-body machine, they often have it like various gyms, sometimes doctor's office, sometimes some like wellness centers, but oftentimes at gyms, they have it and it measures your body, uh, your muscle mass and your body fat. Now, if you are actually challenging your muscles enough to see the benefits, then in that in-body, you'll see your muscle mass going up. If you take a reading and you either see your muscle mass not going up or it's going down, then you likely are not getting enough of a challenge from those workouts, from demonstrating the yoga poses to actually see the benefit. Um, now, of course, the rest and recovery is also important. So just make sure that you're also accounting for sleep, given that you are pretty active throughout the day. But you can use something like the in-body to track your progress and see if you're actually getting those benefits of those um, demonstrations and of the training that you just added in. Uh, some more water while I check out some more. <laughs> Sophie, stop. <laughs> Jeez. Um, okay. So... Let's see. M, I made your protein pancakes for my kids on Saturday. Two out of the four kids like them, um, but they're used to sweet pancakes. Besides the blueberries, what do you suggest I use to try and get them to switch to? Um, it's hard to make stuff for the kids that they like and I can eat too. What do you suggest? I'm not sure if you tried this out, but did you use the zero sugar whipped cream? Because that could be something that really helps to um, add like something fun for the kids without it being actual sugar. So the if you add like the zero sugar whipped cream, helps to add some high quality fat. Um, it also helps to make them more satiated, but that way you're, you're able to make it a little bit more fun and exciting because it's like this big doll of whipped cream, which is fun for a kid uh, without adding in sugar. So I would test that out and see how your kids do, but especially if they're used to something sweet, it can take a little bit of time to kind of like just stop that ultra sweet preference for those really sweet foods, but it does happen. So it's actually a great thing that you're doing this now for your kids, getting them off of the very, very hyper sweet foods. You're just setting them up for success for the future. And I promise you, eventually they're going to actually prefer these foods when you are giving them something like fun, like the, um, like the whipped cream on top as well. This another great, another great question. Oh my gosh. I need some more water. Uh, Simi, I was doing great with intermittent fasting, but I've been having frequent headaches lately that prevents me from doing intermittent fasting for 16 hours. Could this be electrolyte issue? Yes, <laughs> very. It's probably an electrolyte issue. That is one of the most common issues um, that I see with intermittent fasting. Guys, if you're new to intermittent fasting, even if you're not new, but you're not seeing the results with intermittent fasting, this is the exact reason why I created my complete intermittent fasting bundle, because it sets you up with all of these different strategies, all the meals that support your goals, um, so that you don't have to come across issues like the electrolyte headaches that make it so you can't keep doing fasting. So if you are new, please, please check out the complete intermittent fasting bundle. Thousands of people around the world are using it, and it is a really great resource with the amazing meals um, that are more supportive of intermittent fasting as well and the strategies like the electrolytes to make sure you don't come across these issues. So definitely check that out if you are new or if you're not seeing the results of intermittent fasting that you would like. Um, that is linked down description below. Um, all right, Karen, um, thank you for all the awesome information. I was able to break my plateau by following all your advice and level up guide. So that's exactly exactly my point. So check out the complete intermittent fasting bundle. It includes the um, level up guide as well with those specific protocols, like the advanced weight loss strategy. Really, really important tools. Makes it your journey so much easier. Really helps accelerate the progress. Um, how much weight loss is too much per week? Thanks. You know, that can be a tricky one because you'll often see like, the only real research on this um, is usually in relation to just pure calorie restriction and semi-starvation. So um, they'll often say like two pounds per week is what you want to aim for, but that's not actually a totally accurate number. Uh, what I usually recommend taking a look at is trying to um, take a look at the uh, uh, body fat and muscle mass. Because yes, the, the speed does matter to some degree, but if you're not losing like consistently 10 pounds every single week, I'm less concerned. Um, what I'd be more concerned about is how your body is losing the weight. 
So if you can take a look at like the in body and get your muscle mass and your body fat reading and make sure that as you're losing weight, you're not losing muscle, then that's a very good sign that you're keeping that metabolic rate higher, um, that you're not losing the bone or the muscle mass, which ultimately would work against your goals in the future. So rather than just looking at the scale, which really doesn't tell you a lot, because some of that weight loss could even just be water weight in the beginning, which is actually fine. Like, you know, you don't want to be holding on to excess water. You want to get rid of that excess water. Um, but you do want to make sure that you're not losing muscle or bone. That is something that I would recommend taking a look at more so ju than just the frequency or the speed on the scale. Um, that'll give you a better indicator of long-term progress. So there is the in-body, um, for those of you guys who are looking for different options, I highly, highly recommend in-body. Um, it's, you know, a lot of gyms have it where you could even pay like, I think $15 if you aren't a member to use it. And you can just do that like once a month or so. I have no affiliation with them. I just think it's one of the best ways to keep track of progress. That's actually taking a look at the things that you need to be keeping track of. Um, there are at home scales like the Arbo Leaf, which I do have that too. It's just not nearly as accurate as something like the InBody. So if you have access to the InBody, I'd recommend that. Um, <laughs> Sophie is awesome. Yeah, I, I don't know where she went. Thankfully, I think she ran outside now. <laughs> oh, thank you. And um, I love your meals. Can't wait for my kids to start liking them too. Love your program. Thank you so much. Haley, former bodybuilder, how can I reduce the size slash amount of muscle mass? I mean, ultimately, you're looking at the exact opposite of what I'm recommending. Um, you don't want to lose too much muscle mass. I don't know how much muscle mass you have, but you do want to make sure that you're still maintaining a good amount of muscle mass. But if decreasing muscle mass is part of your goal, then you do want to decrease the type of intensity of the workouts as well as the type or the amount of protein you're having. Because essentially you're just looking for the opposite of what most people are looking for. Most people are looking to maintain or increase muscle mass. You're looking to break some down. Um, muscle is really metabolically expensive. We don't want to, our bodies don't want to um, put so much energy into maintaining it unless it's showing that it's actively needed. So if you're not doing the same type of exercises, like if you're like, let's say you're used to, if you're a bodybuilder, you're used to hitting the squat rack, like using free weights or using body weight instead. So you're still exercising, but you're really reducing the um, intensity of that exercise that can just reduce these stimulus. So you aren't going, your body's not going to hold on to as much of that muscle. So take a look at reevaluating your protein, slightly decreasing that while also decreasing the intensity of the exercise, but I would not um, remove it altogether. You don't want to lose all your muscle. Um, and I don't know where you're at for in terms of how much muscle you have, but if losing some muscle is your goal, you, you just don't want to lose too much. So still maintaining the, the high quality protein, just decreasing it, still maintaining the um, exercise, but just decreasing that intensity as well. Uh, dreaming of tacos, great name. Um, hi, I do 24 fasting daily, but hit a plateau. Should I switch it to OMAD alternate day and so on? I'm not sure how long you've been watching my channel, but I have seen 99 out of 100 times it has nothing to do with the fasting length. It has to do with what you're eating in the eating window or the type of exercise or the lack of exercise you're doing. So rather than trying to just switch up your intermittent fast, take a look at your eating window, make sure like you're following those A and nutrient timing that we talked about in my complete intermittent fasting bundle. You're not, you're eating those foods that are more supportive of an intermittent fasting goal. Um, and from there, that's really the first step. From there, you can then address the exercise. So this is where, like I mentioned, even if you aren't new to intermittent fasting, but you're just not seeing those results you're looking for, really highly recommend you check out my complete intermittent fasting bundle with the protocols, the recipes, the meal plans, goes into not just the fast, but also the eating window, which is so important, as well as the exercise, which is also so important if you want to break through that plateau and achieve those sustainable weight loss goals with intermittent fasting. So I have that link down description below. Make sure you check that out. Uh, okay, a couple more questions. This is a much longer live stream than I was thinking it was going to be, but it's because I wanted to go over so many meal plans because you guys really like this. I have, I have a fun time going through your meal plans as well. Interesting. Dave, InBody does make a home scale. I did not know that, but considering it's so expensive, I would still recommend just seeing if you can find a local gym um, who has it because oftentimes you can just get a reading for like you know, 10 to $15 if you aren't a member there. And you don't need to be doing it every week because uh, muscle does take a long time to actually 
increase. Um, so I'd recommend usually doing about like four to six weeks, like every four to six weeks. But interesting to know they have an at-home skill. I'll have to take a look at that. Okay. Um, Shanna says, I find that when I practice intermittent fasting and low carb, my body tends to hold on to water weight. Interestingly, this is probably an electrolyte issue. Um, I would recommend taking a look at your electrolytes and see if you're actually getting enough. It's, we commonly think that like ele electrolytes cause us to hold on to water. That's not always the case. We can actually be holding on to water when we are in an electrolyte deficient state as well. So I would take a look at that because that might be what's going on. Uh, wow. Oh, Dave, I love your comments. You're always so great. Um, lost 80 pounds in six months. I'm 67. Congratulations. It's such an inspiration. Um, how can we also fill in our meal plan for you to review? So this is my, we, I do these weekly live streams during the challenges, the intermittent fasting challenges. The next challenge is coming up in coming up soon. <laughs> so if you want to stay tuned on when that next challenge is so that you can also be in the loop on when these, um, these live streams are as well, recommend signing up for my weekly free newsletter. So you can just go to autumnlnutrition.com forward slash subscribe. So autumn and then E-L-L-E nutrition.com forward slash subscribe. And it's a free weekly newsletter where I also send out like free recipes, free tips, uh, re another really great resource, but that's also where I announce the um, upcoming challenges. And it's during the challenges that I do the meal plan reviews. So um, I'll also be announcing them on my YouTube community board with the links. But this is the last one for this challenge for this section. <laughs> oh, thank you, Kim. Love your meal assessment. So interesting. Glad you guys are liking this. Okay. Uh, You're very welcome, Sheila. Just wanted to say thanks. Going to review some of the videos you mentioned at 64. Can't seem to lose a pound. Check out that protein video I mentioned. I have a whole section on my YouTube channel of intermittent fasting mistakes. That would be another great resource for you to check out too. So the protein, intermittent fasting mistakes. But I would also, again, take a look at the complete intermittent fasting bundle. Lays everything out for you so you can see exactly what you can be doing and where you might not be, be led astray a little bit. Um, your opinion about two to three day water fast, does the opening fast day follow the same rule of protein and fat or keep it lighter? You know, I'm, I'm not a fan of longer fasts. I, I just don't find them to be sustainable. Uh, I don't find them to be something that where it, it might have some health benefits for some people, but I do think it needs to be under the guidance of someone who specializes in this and not typically doing it just on your own because there are a lot of factors to consider with longer fast. But like I mentioned, for most people from a weight loss perspective or from a wellness goal perspective, I don't find that the water fasts are necessary. And in fact, sometimes it can even be uh, detrimental because you are making that initial progress towards your goals in those two to three days where you're just really decreasing insulin, really tapping into fat burning. But then because you haven't ever addressed your eating window and you haven't focused on that component as well, gain it all back very quickly. So you have this up and down cycle. I, I'm not a fan of yo-yo effects. I'd rather you have sustainable progress. That's something that you enjoy and, and eating feel, uh, meals that you love and maintaining muscle mass and maintaining the metabolic rate, maintaining bone mass, which is why I just typically don't recommend um, longer water fasts. Uh, okay, Jill, what would be the best for menopausal women? I have a whole blog post I just released a um, couple weeks ago. I have a couple different blog posts, one for women over 40, one for women over 50, and what you need to be looking out for from a weight loss perspective. So if you go onto my blog and you um, just go through my blog, I think it was like within the last month maybe. I have a whole step-by-step -step guide on what you really need to be looking out for. So you can find my blog at autumnlnutrition.com forward slash blog, or just go to my autumnlnutrition.com website and click the blog tab. Just scroll down until you find the um, intermittent fasting for women over 50 or over 40. And that goes into a lot of details that you'll want to consider. Okay. I'm going to see if there is one earlier and then I got to drink some water. <laughs> Um, 
Someone said two tablespoons of ACV. I thought it was a tablespoon. I'm not sure if that was in reference to someone else's comment, but yeah, one to two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar is one way to help stabilize the blood sugar level. And that's why we do include it in the complete intermittent fasting bundle to help ease from a fasted to a fed state. Uh, as long as it's diluted, one to two tablespoons, and if you're in that range, should be perfectly fine. But I'm not sure if that was in reference to something I said, because I, I don't think I said two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar, maybe someone else. Uh, yeah, it looks like maybe there was a conversation in the chat that I missed. <laughs> All right, guys. So this has been really fun doing the um, meal plan reviews. If you guys like this, it, it would really mean the world to me if you gave this video a thumbs up. Uh, it's a free way to support the channel. Let's me know that you guys want me to do more of this. Um, I really like doing them. I like providing the specific feedback and it's really fun to be able to do this with you guys. So if you gave this video a thumbs up, really, really helps support the channel and helps me to keep creating more live streams just like this. Uh, this is the week three of the fall intermittent fasting challenge. Like I mentioned, if you want to join last week, that's totally fine. We are a very like accepting group. And even if you just get started during the, this last week, it's better to start your wellness journey now versus later. No better time than the present to feel better again. So you can check out the details for that link down description below, as well as the complete intermittent fasting bundle link down description below. But thank you guys so much for tuning in. Um, this is the last live stream until the next one coming up which is the next challenge coming up which will be very soon stay tuned for the announcement of that and i'll see you guys really soon